Welcome to the 10 worst business decisions in history. And number 10, AOL and Time Warner make history with the biggest ever merger, only for it to fall through. In January 2000, Gerald Levin of Time Warner shook hands with Stephen Case of AOL to announce the biggest merger in history, accounting to $350 billion. Time Warner was struggling to make an online presence and so partnering with AOL seemed like a wise choice as it would give them tens of millions of subscribers. However, stocks plummeted before the deal could be made official and $100 billion were lost in shares. This is now one of the most famous ever failed mergers. Number 9. Kodak revolutionized the camera game but didn't go digital themselves. In 1975, Kodak had invented the digital camera but couldn't actually manufacture it due to forces within the company holding back. By the time they'd sorted it, the digital age in cameras had long passed. 50,000 employees were let go and the company filed for bankruptcy. Even today, Kodak still mainly focuses on manufacturing photo paper and ink cartridges. Number 8. Blockbuster say no to Netflix. Blockbuster had an offer from Netflix back in 2000 to join forces in a DVD by mail service. However, Blockbuster refused and mocked them. Netflix is now the biggest movie streaming service in the world, whilst Blockbuster filed for bankruptcy in 2010 after failing to move with the times and meet the demand of consumers. Number 7. Coke's new flavour. In April 1985, Coca-Cola released a new recipe consumers didn't come to like. The reason for the change was due to the company losing market share to its now biggest rival, Pepsi. Turns out the public did not like this change and demanded the old taste be brought back. It got so crazy that individuals began to sell the original Coke on the black market. Number 6. Western Union turned down the telephone. Back in the late 1800s, Western Union boasted its telegram service, making it king of telecommunications. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell created and patented the first telephone and pitched his idea to Western Union, offering to sell it for $100,000. But they said no, believing that the public would never choose it over telegrams. Subsequently, Western Union hired Thomas Edison to recreate the telephone, but following a lengthy lawsuit, Mr. Bell reigned king over telecommunications for an entire decade. Number 5. Turning down Google Excite were given the chance to purchase Google for $750,000 back in 99, but declined as Google were a much smaller company than Excite.com and the owners couldn't see any potential. The tables turned, however, as Excite.com is now an unused website and Google is worth around $600 billion, being the main online search engine used worldwide. Number 4. George Lucas's merchandising deal of a lifetime Back in 1973, George Lucas, director of Star Wars, made a simple decision that would change his life forever. He was approached by Fox to receive a nearly 300% pay rise from $150,000 to $500,000. However, he declined and asked for two things instead. He requested that he have the rights to any Star Wars merchandise as well as any sequel rights. At the time, merchandise and sequel rights were not things of significance, so Fox accepted George's offer. Little did either parties know that this would make Mr. Lucas a billionaire. According to the most recent data from the Licensing Industry Merchandisers Association, the overall merchandise for the films is thought to be worth around $262.9 billion globally. At number 3, News Corp and MySpace, the most popular website in the world, disappears. Back in 2008, MySpace was regarded as the most dominant website out there, even surpassing Google as the most visited site. News Corp decided to purchase it for a massive $580 million, which didn't seem like a lot for a company that was worth $12 billion. They then began to change the site for the worst, as they flooded it with advertising and ruined the user experience. This allowed Facebook to become the dominant website for social media, as they had a much cleaner look and people quickly began making the switch. Three years later, MySpace was sold for $35 million, and it faded into the void. Number 2. Selling 10% of Apple for just $800 Ron Wayne was one of the original founders of Apple, along with the famous Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Mr. Wayne was double the age of his partners, which led to him mentoring both of the Steves. He drew the first Apple logo and wrote up all three of the original partnership agreements. Yet his name is unknown and unrelated by many to Apple, the biggest company in the world. 
This is because at the beginning, he sold his shares in the company for a mere $800. He claims Steve Jobs is not the man the public perceived him to be. If Ron had sold his shares in the modern day, they'd be worth $35 billion. Number one, Ross Perot turns down Microsoft. In 1979, billionaire Ross Perot was on the lookout for a new software company, and he found the perfect match, Microsoft. At the time, Microsoft had just 30 employees, compared with its 124,000 employees today. The figure Bill Gates asked for is unknown. He remembers it to be anywhere between $6 million and $15 million, whilst Mr. Perot remembers it being between $40 million and $60 million. So aside from the fact that the deal was turned down, the actual figure remains unclear. Bill Gates is now the richest man in the US, thanks to Microsoft which in itself is now worth $684 billion. On the other hand, Ross Perot currently ranks 167th richest man in the US. 